The Honorable Member for Radisson. And I too want to echo those uh, words and specifically thank Ms. Smith for the work that she's done on uh, ending human trafficking and, and working and advocating <coughs> against the kinds of issues that we're going to have an opportunity to discuss today. And in fact, I'm going to begin with, uh, with the story of a young boy who's quite familiar to, uh, to Ms. Smith. When Joseph was just eight years old, a pop-up appeared on his screen. He clicked on it. Joseph then began a steady descent into what became a full-blown pornography addiction. By the time he was just nine years old, he was viewing porn multiple times a day. Joseph's parents noticed a change in him. He began to disrespect his mother and act out against his sister to the point where she wouldn't want to be left alone in the same room with him. Thankfully, his parents discovered what Joseph had been pulled into. They spoke with him and put more and more filters on their computer. But the addiction had taken firm hold of young Joseph. He found ways around the filters and continued to feed his addiction. Finally, his parents took away every source of internet. They asked their son, if that was mom in that video, would you be okay with it? If that was your sister, would that be okay? And thankfully, he still knew that that would not be okay. Joseph gained national attention after writing about his porn addiction to MP Joy Smith at age 10. He's now 14 years old and continues to be active in raising awareness and advocating for change. His website, SaveMyGeneration.ca, lists over 25 specific initiatives he's taken. When he heard about this private member's resolution, this is what he had to say. As the founder of Save My Generation and as one who's been ensnared in the trap of pornography at the young age of eight years old, I believe that the member for Radisson's private member's resolution, protecting children and youth from viewing violent, sexually explicit material online, is a huge step in the right direction. I'm so thankful that the MLA for Radisson has taken this step in faith in calling on the members of the Legislative Assembly to pass this resolution. If meaningful age verification legislation were in action when I was introduced to pornography, I may not have been scarred as badly as I have been. I believe that it is time for Canada to turn to concrete action to protect the lives of my generation, which is what this resolution has the potential of doing. Once passed, this resolution is going to help further the cause in bringing forth meaningful age verification in Canada. Thank you for leading our nation in the fight against the harmful effects of pornography. Joseph's from Crystal City, Manitoba, in the Midland constituency. And I'm pleased to tell you that Joseph and his parents are in the gallery today. Let's all show our appreciation to Joseph and his family for the work that they continue to do to advocate for positive social change in Canada. While I suspect that most of the members of this legislature have had some exposure to porn growing up, the experience of young people today is very different from that of the older generation. The ease of access that young people have is unprecedented. Children are accessing porn on home computers, on school computers, on laptops in their bedrooms, and virtually anywhere on their smartphones. And the type of material they are accessing is significantly more violent and exploitive than 30 years ago. And these depictions have consequences for their viewers. Studies show that regular consumption of today's violent, sexually explicit material leads to more acceptance of violence against women, a willingness to use physical or verbal coercion to have sex, and increased sexual attraction to children. Much of today's pornography is misogynistic and based on the humiliation, degradation, and hatred of women. It fuels rape culture by blurring the lines around consent. And it's been shown to be addictive, act activating the same parts of the brain associated with addictions to drugs, alcohol, or gambling. Those addictive effects are even more pronounced in adolescence, with neural pathways permanently scarred during the brain's development process. And the harms do not stop at the person viewing it. Just as Joseph's sister was adversely affected, so many individuals are harmed by so-called second-hand effects of pornography. Consider the case of Retea Parsons. Her mother, Leah Parsons, has this to say. I believe that we're, if we are to change the attitudes and behaviors that contribute to violence against women, we must start at one of the root causes. Easy access to messages and visuals online that condone violent pornographic templates for our youth is setting the stage for what is the norm when it comes to the treatment of females. If my daughter was treated as a human being and not as an object to conquer, she'd still be here today. Societal messages directly influence rape and violence towards women." End quote. 
Research shows that pornography is a gateway to criminal behavior and a portal into the world of sex trafficking. All told, the effects represent a significant social issue, and it is now a public health issue. Public health issues involve problems that affect individuals or groups of people beyond their capacity to correct them. Then the responsibility shifts from the individual to holding external causes or influences accountable. That's why it's incumbent on us as legislators, as legislators and for all legislators across this country to act. Recently, the Parliament of Canada joined together and unanimously passed in Motion 47, calling on the Standing Committee of Health to examine the public health effects of the ease of access and viewing of online violent and degrading sexually explicit material on children, women and men, recognizing and respecting the provincial, provincial and territorial jurisdictions in this regard, and that the committee report its findings to the House no later than July 2017. And it is important to study the issue, but it's even more important to take concrete action, and that's what this resolution that is before us today speaks to. Many of our federal colleagues understand the importance of this issue, and passing this resolution will surely be an encouragement to them. My own MP, NDP, Daniel Blakey, wrote to me about Motion 47. He says, I share your concern about the ease of access to sexually explicit, violent, and degrading material and the harm it can do to our children. I look forward to when we can move from study to concrete action. And former MP Joy Smith, who's with us in the Lodge today, writes, the member for Radisson's resolution is important in that it continues the very important conversation around the violence in online sexually explicit material and the impact it has on men, women, and children. This issue is truly one of the top concerns for families across our nation. All legislators and parliamentarians have a responsibility to stand up and protect our citizens through responsible legislation, and this resolution calls on government to do exactly that. And federal NDP MP Bridget Sansusi had this to say, the NDP recognizes that the increasing ease of access to violent sexually explicit material online could be a problem for our society. It's also been proven that individuals who watch such material could be more inclined to normalize sexual violence. We must take action to ensure that violent and sexually explicit content is not readily accessible by children. We must do something about this. We believe that action must be taken and access to this type of content must be controlled on several levels and in a concerted manner. We want to protect our children from sexually explicit content that could impact their health." End quote. This resolution doesn't only have support from other legislators and parliamentarians, but it has broad support. In the short time since, I was, since it was approved by Legislative Council less than two weeks ago, I've received letters of support from Lana McDonald of the Canadian Centre for Child Protection, which operates cybertip.ca, Jared and Michelle Brock, the directors of Hope for the Soul, and producers of the documentary Over 18, Janet Zacharias, a registered nurse who teaches at Red River College and has studied the health impacts of pornography, TJ Okunu, pastor of a Nigerian church in Winnipeg, who is also here in the gallery with several members of his congregation, Mark Penegay, executive director of ARPA Canada, and Glenn Dine Gerard, the executive director of Defend Dignity, and Marilyn Evans from Parents Aware. There's a lot more that could be said, but I also want to give others an opportunity to speak. So I'll end with this. We owe it to our society, to our children, and to kids like Joseph to join together as legislators across party lines to condemn the ease of access our children and youth have to violent, sexually explicit material online, and to ask the federal government to take meaningful and concrete action to stem the tide. Thank you.